So today we are doing the board setup and Andy is gonna give us some tips on kind of just setting up the traction pad and the fins. What do we got going? Well, we got uh, Moy's brand new board that's ready to surf, but he's been waiting for a pad and things that I had on order for him. And um, the board's nice and cured. I think it's got about three weeks now since it was finished, since we did the sanding video. So the board's super cured now, ready to surf. I got Moy an FCS um, hybrid pad. It's, they didn't have any fish ones that have the big fish cut. Um, so we're gonna put this pad on today. So we'll go through the process of putting the pad on, where to position it, and some of the procedures like making sure it's gonna stick down good. And we got this Brillo pad, which I'll explain. We also got a set of fins. Um, we're gonna explain today, because Moy got a five fin set up. So we've got- So I went with the FCS2, which normally I would go with Future, but I find that Future just doesn't have a lot of the variety. All right, yeah, so another thing is I picked out this template for um, Moy, which is the tried and true Almeric medium. And it's, uh, it's good for the waves here because it's got what they call a lot of rake. The fin rakes back a lot. You know, some fins are a little bit straighter and we're gonna go over a lot of that in another video. We're gonna talk about fins, all different types of fins and how to choose fins for your boards. Yeah. But this is good for the waves here. It's also got a thinner tip, a narrower tape here. And that's good for high speed turning at high speed. This is really good for carving turns and quick snap, so it's gonna be working really good for me. And I really like these quads that came with it. I didn't had never seen the Almeric quads, but I really like this template for the quad. It's got a nice, kind of medium. Some quads have a big back, the big back fins. Sometimes, you know, they put these little sticky glues on here. You gotta be careful not to rip the, rip it up. Just be careful with it. All right, so when you first get one of these pads, you, and you, you know, it was specifically for a high, this is kind of a hybrid fish. Generally what I do when I have a, a new board with a pad is I see where the fins are. I look underneath first and I say, okay, here's the fin cluster. My foot, your foot's gonna usually be kind of in, in the middle of the fin cluster, we're saying right here. Mm -hmm. Not forward of the fins, right not there, too far yeah. back, right here. So you kind of- So like right here. Yeah, you want the middle of the pad hitting where your sweet spot of your back foot is gonna be right there. Mm -hmm. But then when you're going high speeds and surfing, you wanna to tend to push your foot back once you're at a high speed so you can do a better turn. So you don't want this too forward. If you have the pad forward, and this is the sweet spot where it's normally to be, you won't have room to stick your foot back on the sweet spot when you're at high speed and you want to I've seen people put the uh, do that, like, like they'll put the pad like there. Yeah. It's and terrible. it's just too, too way too far. Well, also, when you're paddling on the board, sometimes your knee will be on this kick, you know? Yeah. Your knee is, you also, when you're on a board, generally, your knees are almost where your foot's gonna go when you stand up. So if this is forward, then you're you're like risen up a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's not. It's really awkward. So you want to have. It's kind of nice when your knee kind of locks in right here. But we're not gonna go too far not because too far. the the curve starts coming, right? So just right before the curve. Yeah, we're the, gonna the feel on this right fish. Right before the it. Yeah, this kind of comes up and it hits the deck here. So we're gonna talk about. I'm thinking about. Boom, just leave it a little bit of right leeway. there, so it hooks up right there at the end. Kind of looks. Yeah, nice good. Too. Okay. I like to use these Brillo pads, like the uh, Scotch Brights. You can find them in any hardware store. I use these on the finish. Remember when we did the sanding video? But for the pad today, actually, just to make sure there's no residue on there, and so it has a little bit better roughed up surface. We're just gonna hit this where the pad's gonna go. Anyways, little alcohol on a rag, cause this dries really quick. We're just gonna make sure we get, that's like- Get all the dust, dust and dust comes particles off. off. Yeah, and then it's get ready to stick, but we'll all give right. it a second to dry. And I, I saw the video that a, a, your son did, Akili did on setting a traction pad on. He did the right thing by marking. Cause once you decide where it's gonna go, which is right here, Mm -hmm. We're gonna make a little mark just so we know that's kind of where it goes right there. It's better to double check, just like shaping boards. Check twice, cut once. And we're gonna check, check twice, twice, stick, stick. once. <laughs> we're gonna unstick this. And this you gotta be really slow with too, because sometimes like that right there, a little corner will rip, see that? So you gotta make sure you kind of go slowly. Have it come off nice and clean. So, line this up right where it's supposed to be. And there's my mark up there. Boom, easy as that. And then, you know, you're gonna do an initial stick where you, especially, you know, the big mistake people make is where these kick pads are. It'll, they won't stick it down really good on the corners because these is, this is where it comes up right here. Yeah, they always the come up. The water rushes through. So many stick. times they come up, yeah. So you really wanna make sure, okay, first stick, stick it down, then later on, before you use it, definitely come back and, and stick it down. Make sure all the corners are stuck and just, you know, 
to, to do it a few times come in you know it's usually better to let it sit for 24 hours i mean it'll stick when you do this procedure with cleaning it mm -hmm. you could just go out and surf it and it'll probably stay on but it's better to let the the glue from this kind of cure on the board for 24 hours. they say that on the pads usually. yeah let it i won't surf it long. till tomorrow or the next day yeah it's kind of Good, and then we're going to splay it out right there. So that was well done. All right, so we got the pad on, and we're going to go over his fin system here. I don't know if a lot of people know this because it's not a well known thing, but you can buy sets of five fin sets. So if you see this board, if you buy a board, and there's a lot more of them out there these days where it has the five fin boxes. So you has, it gives you the option to run it as a try, so three fins and not have any fins in here, or you can take the back fin out and put it as a quad. So we have that option here since I got him the Almer five fin set. So basically, when, I, when people ask me, well, when are you gonna ride as a try? When are you gonna ride as a quad? Like generally, the general rule is quad works really good in hollow surf because it's like the, the fins are on the rails and it grabs the the hollow wave better because the fins are on the rail it just grabs the face and it goes and it has more speed um, as well in small waves when it's clean if you need extra speed the quad is faster even though some people be ask me why are four fins faster than three fins but it's because the middle fin when you're riding three fins this fin right in the middle acts as like a little bit of a break it's kind of like the, 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 almost a bad spot to have a fin but but it works good for control so yeah. I tell people, I only really like to ride three fins when the wind, when the waves are kind of bumpy or there's a lot of current. It's like rough conditions and you're going to struggle a little bit and, and the board can get away from you because quads can tend to like in bumpy surf kind of cavitate when there's bump or you hit a, a, hit a current or something, weird currents in the water. Sometimes there's a mixture of swells and there's a cross current. The thruster does have some control there and it creates some um, better holding power. Quads tend to make you surf a little bit more on the rail because, you, because the fins are on the rail. So some people might feel it a little bit slidey at first, but you just gotta use the rail of the board more. So yeah, this one goes on the side fin. It's nice, the FCS2 snap in, so you just kind of lock it into the front here. And you know, a lot of people have a hard time with this because it's like they think it's gonna hurt the board. You just kind of push it down in like that. And then pulling it out, it might be good to use a little rag or something. So you I always use the out. leash. The you use a leash? I use the padding, the, the ankles part. Oh, of it. oh, that makes sense. That's yeah. a good idea. Morgan. There's a video in, of Kelly Slater doing the same thing, oh, and I was really? like, ah, oh, he does it too. Oh. I will do a comparison one day where I, where I surf it as a thruster, like in the same session, and then I'll just pop out mm -hmm. and then switch it. All right, thanks, Andy. You're welcome. And we'll see you guys in the Pleasure. next video. Pura Vida. Pura Vida. And Aloha.